welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing. All right, tribe, let's vibe. What's up? You tell me. So I'm just gonna <clears throat> I'm just gonna jump right into it. Okay. So I need an apology because last night I said we were gonna record, <clears throat> and you came home from an event with the expectation that we would record. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have it. No. Just didn't set everything up. All the lights, set up the mics. We recorded. Cameras. We started recording in like, what was it, like five minutes? Might have been five, five minutes. Five to ten minutes. Five to ten minutes into it, I just realized I didn't have it. So I was just like, Jess, I don't have it. <laughs> and Jess tried to fight through. Um, bless her heart, but I just didn't have it. I was drained. I was just tired. So, like, we got in the bed, and I think she was talking to me about something, and I, I, all I know is I laid down, we were speaking, and then it was, like, six o'clock. I was o- speaking, and then I just said, go to you sleep. You were speaking, and then it was, like, six o'clock this morning. That's all, that's all I remember. So, my bad. But I promised you we record tonight. We didn't have a choice but to record tonight. I promise. Well, we had we got one in the chamber that we could re- we could we could have dropped. You weren't going to release the chamber this week. Why not? Because we just recorded the chamber. Yeah, and we would have the same clothes on <laughs> that we had on last week. But um, I promised you we would record tonight, and I would be I would be all here. Because I miss karaoke because of you. I would be all here, and I'm here. Oh, really? Did you tell them that we were we didn't end up recording? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Because I had asked... Um, now they know. I had asked Alana how it went, and she was like, all right. I was like, oh, damn, does she know? <laughs> but whatever. You didn't want to go anyway. Do they know that? I was going to go, but then once I was set in the mind of, okay, we're absolutely recording, I didn't want to record and then go back out. Because I was already out, I could have just stayed out. Right. But That's I came my bad. back. It's <clears throat> my bad. It's all good. Won't happen again. It probably will. Hmm. It probably will. No, I won't. That was that was like the first time ever. Um. That. We've been recording, it and I, <clears throat> not only felt it, that I didn't have it, but actually like stopped recording. Like stop, like yeah, because I've not thing. had it, but I've yeah, and so have, and so have I. Normally, I'll, I'll push through, and then we'll hit, um, we'll hit a, hit a good topic, and then we'll we'll finish the episode. And they almost always turn out <clears throat> great, but I don't know, man. It was weird. That was last night was different, but it's actually a really good thing that we didn't record because there's way more, way more content today. Um. And it's a beautiful thing. I got nothing. You got nothing? Like, in terms of, like, I don't know what's going on, so I don't have any content. So you going to have a current events podcast, but you don't know the current events? No, I don't have time for a current event right now. I have a lot. There's a lot happening this week. Mm. I mean, there's a lot happening every week, but I just haven't. Our days have just been weird, so it's like a lot of times... You know, I'll watch Inside Edition, I'll watch the news, I'll watch, you know, Entertainment Tonight, and that helps me know what's happening in the world of others. I haven't watched any of those, so I'm just kind of out of the loop, and I just haven't really been on social media. I've just, I've, this new role, it's not new anymore, but this role I'm in, I've never been so meeting heavy in my life. Um, I'm always in a meeting and when I think I don't have a meeting I have a meeting 
Like I had a thirty minute meeting that turned into a two hour meeting. I'm saying, or, or you have a quick meeting. Quick meeting that turns into the next day. Yeah. Which I had one of those yesterday, but thankfully, like, yes, that was the first time I said I have a hard stop, and I never use that term. Like, everyone's always like, I have a hard stop at five. I was like, I have a hard stop at five forty-five. So I'm at four five forty-five. I'm I'm done. Like we can, and then we ended up picking up this morning at ten thirty, and then I actually skipped a meeting to continue that meeting because we're just in we're you know handling audits and reconciliations and it takes a lot of time and going through spreadsheets and my tracking and someone else's tracking and this person's tracking and making sure they all track together so it's uh i'm hoping it will die down but Mm. for the time being it is and i can tell because like i'll leave my phone start doing work and by the time i come back to my phone it's like 116 mixed missed text messages i'm like how to my friends like how are you all able to carry a conversation and then i have to like find ways to interject but it's like after the fact so then i have fomo it's like it's it's a struggle but but yeah so i i'm bad this week i don't really know about what current events are so maybe while you speak i'll scroll I'll speak and scroll <clears throat> Yeah, we um. So we had a open house tonight at our oldest school, and I think it it actually hit me that we have third grader. A third grader. Because when they were directing us, they said third grade this way. And that's the way we went. And I was like, oh. New hallway. New hallway, new side of the building. We're in third grade now. We, we we're in third grade now. And um, teacher's young, of course, seems like she's relatively fresh out of college. Maybe not directly, but Mm -hmm. she hasn't been. She's youthful. She's definitely youthful. Black. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Great. Super excited. Um, but this is probably the most anxiety I've had over a grade level for our oldest since she's started going to school. And I don't know if it's because this is kind of like where it starts to get, school starts to get like real. Intense. Like real, real. Like the homework, the expectations, the testing. Um, and I don't know. It's just like, man, where? When did this happen? Mm-hmm. Like, when did? So, but you know, she's taking all the stride, of course, and she's got. She knows several of her her classmates, which is the benefits of of a small school. Um, you tend to to know everybody, and there's a good chance that you're going to have somebody you know in in class with you. But yeah, man, baby's all growing up. I mean, she's not, but she's not. She's got a lot more growing to do. Yeah. But it's a glimpse of like, okay, third grade. We got two years left in elementary school because unlike where I'm from, elementary school runs yeah. till sixth grade in Massachusetts. So it was very weird, and I still feel like sixth grade is too young to mix with middle schoolers. I don't know how it was in Virginia, but in Massachusetts, you know, you go K through six, seven, eight, and then nine through 12, unless you're in like, you know, a special private school. And then some of them go like K through eight, and then you'll go nine through 12, or some of them just run K through 12. So I find it very interesting that down here, they think it's appropriate to pair or to put sixth graders with um, seventh and eighth graders to me that just it, it it seems too soon for that culture mm. shock um but you know i'm sure someone did studies and research to confirm that that works yeah but virginia it was k through five. Oh, really and then six seven eight and then nine through so twelve it must be a southern thing i guess 
I don't, I, have, I'm any, I don't to, have anything else to compare it to. Yeah, I'm trying to remember New York. <laughs> but I feel like it was, well, I guess, okay, yeah, Virginia is technically Southern. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I'm, I think it was, it's probably the same in, in the D.C. area, too. I mean, D.C. is low-key Southern. But I feel like at least I, I can only speak the for district. I can only speak for my Massachusetts. Um, I want to say New York was the same, but I could be I could be wrong. Uh, I didn't really have reason. I know what high school my cousins went to because they all went to the same high school, but I can't remember at what point they they started going there. But I went K through through six, so kindergarten through sixth grade, and then I middle school was two years, seventh and eighth grade, and then you went to high school eight, uh, nine to twelve. So it's still hard for me to wrap my mind around the idea of like what an eleven year old, mm. you know, co mingling with you know, teenagers. Um, they're still a baby in in my head. So, um, but circling that back to us, how it relates to us is you know. Our kid has two years and then she's off to middle school. Middle school. And two years goes fast. Because, I mean, what, three years in elementary school has already come and gone. And, you know, by the time she's getting ready to go into middle school, our middle is going to be starting kindergarten. And then, what, I feel like essentially the next year, Sonoma would probably be joining kindergarten. I, I have to do the math on there their ages but i think it they're just back to back um so that's something to that we have to prepare ourselves for that i'm not prepared to prepare myself for um and then i'm dealing with this conundrum of do we send all the girls to the same school where they then have to essentially live in the shadow or the legacy of their sister that could be a positive thing but it could also be you know detrimental so I've been trying to think about that because I'm really, my cousins all went, I just mentioned, they all went to the same, um, I think it was a high school. Uh, it was called Hostess. I don't know why I remember that, but um, they all went there. And then two of my cousins went to the same university and, or college. And I remember being concerned when they both went because I felt like they would, the, the one who followed would always be in the shadow of her sister because she had also followed her and gone to the same high school as well. So I remember just being concerned. So I've always had that in the back of my mind now that we have multiples because, you know, Solace has kind of forged her path and that's great. And I feel like that could be beneficial for both Savi and Sonoma, but I also don't, I really want to be intentional about not comparing them to each other. And I feel like when you go to a school that your sibling went to, you're defaulted. So if your sibling was super great, everyone is going to make the same assumption. So if you learn different, process different, behave different, that can be used against you. It can be a positive thing, but it can be used against you. It's also the same like if your oldest sibling was like uh, super bad and then you come in you already have a reputation that's not yours and you don't get a chance. So I've had the thought that, you know, maybe Savi should go to her own school and kind of develop in her own right. And I mean, our school, the Solace school has a lot of turnover. So it's not like the kids are going to, could potentially have the same teacher. Cause that was one thing I wanted. I wanted them to have her kindergarten teacher um, because during COVID Savi would like, be in the zoom like hey i'm here so i felt like it'd be cute if she could go to the same teacher so that's just you know and i mean if you're a parent out there and your kids all went to the same school and you feel like sharing some feedback some opinion on like what worked what didn't work do you wish you had sent them to different schools are you glad you sent them to the same maybe you sent them to different schools and you wish you sent them to the same school but um but yeah that's just something i've i've thought about um as Savi's getting older and as, you know, we touched on it last episode, I think that, you know, how important it is for me, for me, for us, for her to have her own identity outside of her sisters. And I think that could come about if she goes to a different school. Um, so we'll see. We still have two years to figure it out. So In elementary school, I was very exceptional. Um, I say that humbly. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I was great. But, like, my parents were always, like, tuning 
tooting my horn. You know, I played the violin. Um, I think I played the saxophone in elementary school. I um, And I was just a well-behaved kid. So they were always, anytime there had to be like some kind of, you know, parent counsel or there was one, there was one instance where they needed, my principal picked the parents of specific children to come and speak on behalf of the school and they picked my parents because of me. And I'm, I will never forget this. It was like seven o'clock at night. You know, we had just finished dinner. You know, I'm cleaning up, phone rings, phone, you know, is connected to the wall. So I pick up the phone and uh, my principal's name was Mrs. Shoop. So hello. And he's like, hi, Jessica, this is Principal Shoop. And I was like, hi. He's like, okay, I talked to one of your parents. So I was like, okay. So I go to get the phone, and my mom's like, you know, who is it? And I was like, it's Principal Shoop. And she looked at me, and I was like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. So as soon as the, they got on the phone, um, she said, the, my principal, she was like, don't worry. She didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. You know, and, and that I guess she explained to my parents that, you know, they, they are having some kind of presentation at the school or they're, they're picking specific parents to come out and they would like my parents to come so you know you know john he you know put on a three-piece suit because that's just what he has to do and you know he went to the school and he was so proud and i remember there being a moment years later because my brother is very i won't say he's opposite me i think in hindsight he learns very different from me and he had just different life experiences and then i think there's just I think a lot of firstborn children are defaulted to being successful because we are the firstborn. Um, and so, you know, we're just, I think that's just a natural disposition of being a firstborn child. Not saying other numerical children aren't successful, but I think, I, I feel like I've read like different studies and stuff about firstborn children. And I remember one time my dad had said, you know, Every time we get called to the school for Jeremy, it's because he's not doing something. It's not it's because he's not doing something right, or he's misbehaving, or or whatever. And I that kind of sticks with me. And Jeremy never went to any of the same schools that I went to. Um, you know, we lived on the opposite side of town. Jeremy and I eight years apart, so he lived on the opposite side of town. So he went to everything he did. He was brand new. He forged his own his own life. His own you know school experience but I, I remember thinking like it's so opposite because he still got school phone calls but the phone calls he got for school were very opposite the phone calls that I got for school so you know it's just it's just interesting um but I want to make sure that that kind of pressure is not put on any of our kids you know I want their success to be individual for them um but then I also have a moment where it's like, you know, it might be beneficial. There might be an instance where it's like, oh, that's a rushing, like, let her. I could see Sonoma getting herself in some kind of little mess where someone would be like, oh, that's Solace's little sister. And they'll be like, oh, Solace. Or, you know, some kind of special programming that there's not really an extra spot, but because, you know, she's Sovereign's little sister or because she saw someone's Solace's little sister, they'll be able to, to get in. So I don't know. It's it's you don't realize the decisions you have to make until you have to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. And I'm naturally an overthinker. So I think I'm over processing this. And, you know, someone might listen to this and be like, it's really not that big a deal. But for me, it's just like this could affect the trajectory of the rest of their life or how they view themselves. You know, if Savi goes to school and, you know, isn't exactly like Solace was, is that going to affect her where she feels like she needs to live up to a standard? Because, because I'm so big in this whole mental health thing and, you know, I've got my Google, you know, psychology degree, um, and, you know, I'm a Google therapist. Um, I'm really sensitive to like, what is the thing that I'm going to say to her that's gonna have her in a therapy session when she's, you know, in 20 years? What's the thing that, what's the situation she's going to be put in that might potentially create anxiety in her? And that's something like the comparisons between the two of them. And even the same for Solace, like we were talking earlier about being the oldest sibling, cause that's oddly something we can relate about. Like she and I are both firstborns and you know, she is an exceptional firstborn and I'm very protective of like her things and her space because I know what it's like to have my things in my space invaded because I had siblings and 
the gap is so wide and it's so easy for a little person to sneak into your room and start messing around. And I, 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 I remember what it was like to come home from school and my stuff be messed with, you know, my room be, you know, my little brother would pull clothes out of my bureau and put them on the floor and then I would have to clean it up even though it was a mess he made and I was even telling Solace that I used to have like anxiety coming home because I didn't know what state my bedroom would be in because this you know little terror of a brother I had would have free reign during the day he'd have six to eight hours to just do whatever he wanted so I'm very particular and and I appreciate that she recognized she was like is that why when someone says that when I say or when we say that someone made a mess you have them clean it up I'm like yeah because you know even though it's in your room if you didn't make the mess you shouldn't have to clean it but if you helped make the mess then yeah you got to clean it but I'm just very protective because that's something she and I can bond on being an older sibling. Now I wasn't an older sibling of multiples. I, I just had one little sibling and you know, the gap was eight years, but I get it. And so, you know, I just, I wonder, I, I wonder how these things can affect you in the long run. I mean, they do so. community clean up like Sonoma is good for bringing toys. There are toys in the living room now that I'll ask, you know, Solace and Savi to take back. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they complain, and like I didn't bring this here. So no more running here. And I get it. And sometimes I have the patience to like filter through it. And other times I'm like, y'all, I just need these toys gone, and I need them back in the room. And I'm pretty sure y'all touched this at some point. So just do it, because right now she's still a baby. But her day of reckoning is coming too. But, and I recognize I probably overthink, I know I overthink a lot of aspects of life uh, because, and I read something once and it was referencing like the gifts you give your kids, that everything you give your kids, you're essentially like raising yourself at that age. So things that you, sub, like you wanted at that age subconsciously, you're gifting your kids those things mm. in place of like, oh, me at seven, I wanted this, or I would have wanted this. And I think that also applies in raising where you're just, you You might not intentionally do it, but you are raising yourself um, in someone else. And I know like there was a season where it's like, and we're, we're busy, but not busy at the same time. Um, once the school year starts, we're pretty active, but like I always wanted us to like, go out, be at festivals, go to fairs, go to carnivals, like be an active family because I didn't really grow up in an active family. Like the weekends were at home. Like I, my parents worked five days a week. They were rightfully tired. And, you know, I just, I think I just felt like we were boring. Like our weekends were the same. You know, we'd go, you know, we go to church on Sunday after church, we go to the buffet. Like, it was just it seemed so boring to me so you know with our three kids and yes it can be exhausting but it's like let's go to south then let's go here let's go here and i remember a few months back it was just like we're just so busy and mm -hmm. you know it's almost like damned if you do damned if you don't you just I can't win i appreciate her she says that but if we go straight boring she'd be like can we go somewhere can we do something? Do you want to go to Target? Never anything wrong with being at home. Um, so I literally just pray all the time. And I'm like, Lord, just guide me to do this thing right. Because I have three people that I'm responsible for being their mother. And I just don't want to fail them. Speaking of failing. Do you remember a few months ago? Might have been last year. Might have been Rush Vibes season two. Maybe even been season one, I can't remember. Where we talked about Fresh, the podcast Fresh and Fit. You remember the podcast? No. Not even remember. The guys, they're, they're two oh, black men. The misogynist. Who said they, who <gasps> made fun of current. and said they don't, they don't like, they don't date black women yeah. because, you know, the attitude and, and all that stuff. Um, Man, I wish I cussed. They um, effed around. Part of a part of a very popular. They host a very popular. They hosted uh, podcast called Fresh and Fit, where they 
um, after round talk about and found uh, out you know, giving men tips on manhood and, and how to be a man. They're like, what's his name? Kevin Smalls, Kevin Samuels, Kevin. Kevin Samuels, God bless the dead. Um, God bless the dead. <laughs> is that a statement? Yeah, God bless the dead. Um, He's dead, right? He is. I've just never heard that term. I mean, I could be corny and, and like bland like everybody else and say rest in peace. I would just say rest. Rest in heaven. Rest wherever you is. Rest in the no, I got blessed with that. Rest. So, um, they went viral. You know, I mean, they they go viral a lot, but they went viral most notably last year because they openly talked about how they don't like dating black women mm -hmm. and the reasons why they don't like dating black women. And they said, just like so women, bad. just like women are allowed to have a preference, like they don't like short men, they don't like men under six feet, they want men to have a certain amount of money, they like men who spend at least. X amount of dollars on first dates, they say they're allowed to have an opinion of what kind of woman, the race of the woman that they date, and they don't want to date black women because they generally come with a certain experience. When they're worse, I'm mine. Myron Gaines and Walter Weeks. I don't need to know their names. That's that's fresh and that's fresh and fit. What are their names? Myron Myron Gaines and Walter Weeks. Sounds like some Sherman Williams colors. <laughs> Okay. Like um, some paint colors. Like very, just, very, very pop. You know, these types of podcasts. I feel like they're not even good looking. I've never these, actually seen them, but it's always like ugly dudes, not. Booties in the eye they behold. And, and, and who or what does or doesn't look good is totally subjective. Okay. Um, and this isn't me defending them, I'm just generally speaking. Mm. Like, it's subjective. Mm -hmm. So these types of podcasts generally do really well because the target demo men <laughs> single men um not just single men i'm sure there's unmarried majority men. majority i'm sure there's unmarried um, men who are single, married to black women who are listening to those misogynists single, like you right single men uh eat a lot of this stuff up did you listen to them no not other not other than the clips of the episode where they were talking about black women and i don't even remember it to be honest with you um and then they, they made the rounds after that. They went on Schultz's podcast. I don't think they ever Schultz went on. Had him? No, I'm yeah, Schultz had him on Franklin, Frank Flagrant. But they were actually more critical of them than like gassing them up. Um, Schultz's wife isn't black, is she? Actually, I don't know. I hope she is. I, I feel like that would just. Make I don't know that it matters. It would just make sense for me. So, um, <laughs> well, so anyways. They were, uh, they host their podcast on YouTube, yeah. the video portion, they. where they, they rake in, I'm sure, a lot of, a lot of views. Raked. But it was announced by them this week that they had been kicked out of the uh, YouTube earners. They were demonetized. They were demonetized for, um, I think, YouTube pokes, pokesperson, <laughs> spokesperson said. Um, but they were doing some fraud. They've suspended the Fresh and Fit channel from the YouTube Partners Program for repeated violations of our policies, including our advertiser-friendly guidelines and community guidelines, which is relatively vague. Um, no, they were um, reporting competitors. Oh, so really? YouTube has this rule that if you are a monetized show and you get three reports... Um, you lose your monetization, so you mm. become demonetized. And I guess someone discovered that they were reporting their competitors. Oh, really? Yeah. See, this part I didn't know. You didn't know. I How didn't do know. I know this? And I I'm not know. even staying current in things. I don't know. But yeah, so they were they were being shady. They after uh, round and they found out. So YouTube figured it out, and they were like, "Oh, this is what you're gonna do. We're gonna demonetize you." So they were under the impression that it was because of the subjects they cover, which would make sense because they've been covering these subjects yes. for like, for like years. Um, unless my, unless, I can't, what was my source? Um, unless my source was incorrect. That's what I had heard. Hmm. And I was like, you know, y'all deserve all of that. So it's important. I also think YouTube needs to increase the number of reports. 
I think three is not enough. Well, I would just hope that with any report, there comes some sort of investigation. They just don't like. But just, I think you should take more than three because, as you can see, it's easy to get three report. Now, I don't know if it has to be three monetized shows reporting you or if it's just three reports. But if you if it's not hard to get three people to report you. Um, so I, I, I need to f look into the details on that. But yeah. at least I believe that's what I had heard is why they got demonetized and f and frankly like they deserve it i, I don't know that we want to go down a defending black woman rabbit hole because you know we've been doing this and it hasn't changed but i'm just not for i'm not for these shows these these platforms that these type of black men build for themselves and then they rally up these troops of other black men who and I'm not white I'm not Latino so I don't know if other communities Latinx I'm, oh, okay <laughs> Latinx um, even though my ancestry gave me a leaf that said I might actually be a little Latino um, I got like Nicaragua super random but um I'm none of these cultures. I can only speak for my portion of the black diaspora. And so I don't know if there are like white YouTubers, podcasters who are like white women just aren't giving what they need to be giving like these other women are giving. I don't know if Asians are doing this. I don't know if, you know, Latinx, Latinos, whatever. I don't know what everyone else is doing. So I can only speak for my community. <sighs> but I am really... I appreciate that they're they're still going to have their platform. They're you know Spotify will probably pick them up. Whatever. I, I, mean, I don't care where they go. Um, but I am so just over these conversations. I've said it on an episode before. I don't care about interracial relationships. I appreciate an interrelation interracial relationship. I my concern is always if you think you're better than other members of your race because you are married to someone or with someone of another race that's a problem because you feel like that person is giving you a superiority complex and that means that you view yourself as inferior and that you become superior because of this and that just leads to colonialism and, and instilled um racial bias that's that's been programmed within you the the terms i haven't talked about is the terms are not coming quick so that's my number one issue um and if you bash your race like i've said i said th these exact words if you are making your way downtown walking fast and you happen to bump into someone of the opposite race of another race and you just happen to fall in love great for you i hope you have wonderful relationship bliss if that's it and if you are one of those people that your preference is genuinely another race but again there's no i'm better than the rest of my race because i'm with someone of this race great because like i think of myself i grew up in suburban massachusetts my elementary school years i was one of like one and a half black people in a classroom. I was surrounded by white people. I'm pretty sure I thought I was white for a good portion of my life until I realized I wasn't. So I only had crushes on little white boys. Looking back on them now, I'm like, whoo, Jess, Jess. And then, you know, wish I had a very large Latino community. So I had a lot of crushes on Latino men, but that was the environment. Latinx. No, they were Latino. Um, that was the environment I was in. So sometimes the environment you're in can dictate who you find attractive. But I was never in this place where I thought, oh, I would be better because I am w with people or. I was making sure you didn't kill the bottle. Of another race. My issue, and I feel like it comes from black men more than it comes from black women, is black men will put black women down when they are with a woman of another race 
And that's why I didn't appreciate those men. You know, black women are loud. Black, like, white women are loud. Latino women are loud. Asian women can be loud. I know some loud Asian women. Um, like, women are women can be loud. Women can also be quiet. They can be gentle. But I, I, I always, I just don't like the idea that a characteristic is based on a color, because that is not the case. So again, I support your interracial relationships i you know i have a mo if i see a white man with a black girl i'm like oh okay like with the swirl vice versa black woman with a with a white man okay girl i see it i see it i'm hesitant with a black man because i'm like were you bashing other black women knowing that you likely came from a black woman to be with this and i have a friend who her preference is black men she is not a black woman but she is very adamant on not being with a black man who is going to bash black women and she blatantly said she was like because black women are great so if you're trying to be with me because you have this issue with black women i'm not the white woman for you i'm not the woman for you race aside so that is important to me that you're not because someone can genuinely just fall in love with someone of another race it can be a co-worker it can be you know someone you were tutoring you someone you rear-ended and now you're talking to each other via you know insurance and trying to get claims like life happens in unexpected ways it is literally one encounter that could be the difference between you being married to a white woman a latino woman a black woman an asian woman like anything so I, wrapping this all up, they deserve what, what they got. And I hope things get worse for them. And I hope they don't get monetized again. Because I don't support anyone who supports the bashing of an entire community of women. Because they may or may not have had a bad experience. Or they are stuck in their own racial biases. And they are planting this seed within a community that is creating internal destruction and hate. I yield my mic. So that was a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so Fresh and Fit has uh, 1.4 million subscribers. And uh, I would imagine with a lot of views that they get on their videos, they're probably making some pretty good money. Mm -hmm. um, I think that this Fresh and Fit podcast is how they make their living, made their living. Um, they are also on Rumble, though their subscribers is... What's a Rumble? Rumble is a, has been labeled as a, a right-wing streaming platform. Why are two black men on a right... It's been labeled that i don't know if it's necessarily true like academics is over there um but black men can't be right wing is that what you're <laughs> like is that what you said why what why are two black men on a right wing streaming platform because mm -hmm. you know black people can be conservative right yeah but but what i just feel like there's actually a say that because we'll, we'll get to we, we'll get to political stuff um so yeah so they are not banned from posting on youtube they just can't make any money off of it. but someone's making money off of it like you so like because they're getting the views someone's got to be making the, like youtube has to be making the money off i'm of sure it. youtube is um so myron Gains actually got emotional. Doesn't that sound like a shade of blue? No, um, during the pod, and actually walked off because he started Myron crying. Gaines with a matte finish, and so they were, um, they were pretty emotional mm. and pretty shocked. Dang, it hurts when the mighty fall. Yeah. So, <laughs> I I don't know that I have, like, 
a really solid opinion on this one way or the other because I like I said I didn't watch the podcast um I listened to some of their stuff like I think I peeked at their interview with Brittany Renner that they had on academics platform um why did they interview Brittany Renner I think she just wanted to interview or they wanted to they asked the interview and she said yeah but it was it was around the time that they made the black woman comment and um that came up and they, they discussed it. It was actually a way more cordial interview than I think most people would have thought. And then a lot of the clips that got released would suggest. But, you know, obviously, if you break the rules of of a platform, then, you know, you you uh, open yourself up to the consequences of, of doing that. So mm-hmm. if, if it's true that they were... <laughs> Reporting That's com- what I heard. Reporting competitors, that is kind of grimy. That's what my streets hurt. Um... And yeah, then, then 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 they deserve it. Have you seen the video on Instagram of I think he's like a professor and he's you know recording himself and he's at a whiteboard yeah. and he has a graph. Yeah. And on that graph, everybody's seen. It. You know, he writes. You know, if you fucked around, find out. Everybody's seen. And it, then yeah. he shows. This is a great moment. This is the first time that was the first time I've cussed on the podcast. Um, <laughs> this is absolutely not the first time you've cussed. It is. I no, mean, I'm gonna say it's like ass or damn. It's cussing. No, it's not. If, it's, it if both words are biblical. And what if I'm not Christian? Fast forward. <laughs> no, I'm saying this. Then that would doesn't. Then the Bible doesn't mean anything to me if I'm not Christian. Anyway, it's still a cuss word. This is where this is a perfect <laughs> fast forward injection of that equation. <laughs> And and it 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 shows you how certain acts eventually will meet on the access. So you know that's what they did, and now they're finding out. I but you know it's 2023. It's a podcast, social media kind of world. They'll be just fine. I I am fully confident they will be just fine. Yeah, they'll be back. They're not probably going, not on YouTube. But they're not going to make as they're they're not going to make their YouTube money, but they will. Someone is going to support them. They'll be fine. So I'm not I'm not worried about them, because they said all their you know controversial stuff and they didn't get, they managed to not get canceled. So if what I heard that they were just reporting people, that's it. They'll be fine. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is sort of the danger of the creator, the age of the creator that we're sort of in, in that no creator really has their own platform. They usually build their following on somebody else's platform, mm-hmm. like an Instagram, like a YouTube, like a Facebook. Um, so you're kind of at the mercy of TikTok, you're kind of at the mercy of platform, like Zuckerberg could be like, nah, mm-hmm. no more money going to, it's influencers. One revenue stream just dried up. Yep. TikTok, could TikTok, TikTok, could, TikTok, TikTok yeah. could get shut down. Okay. YouTube could say, if y'all say it's shit, high and <laughs> you say shit, if you cuss at all, you're done. You're done. Like, so it's just a danger. So you always got to be careful, which the ways that you move. And apparently they weren't. Um, It is a, you, cool. and you find out eventually those two points will intersect. Yeah. So they round and found out. Yeah. That's literally one of my favorite statements. And I wish, I wish I was a cusser so I could use that statement more. But I was on Instagram and I have a um, professional Instagram like parody page that I follow and someone had said, you know, what is a professional way in an email to respond to F around and find out? I think I I shared it on my story and it was like, test that assumption and come back to me with your findings. And I, when I tell you, I am waiting for the opportunity to tell someone to test that assumption 
and return back to me with their findings. I love opportunities to be professionally, professionally shady and, and petty. And mm. I, I have a boss who is very professionally petty sometimes. And some, we were in a meeting and someone asked her to provide like confirmation of like certain requests. And when I tell you, sis sent an email and attached every single email, <laughs> she attached like 17 emails. And I had to send like all the gifts of like round of applause. I, I said, they asked you for receipts and you did a whole tax audit. Like she pulled an Uncle Sam. So I just am, anytime I see like a petty professional term I can use, I like store it and wait for the opportunity. Yeah. Circling back. Circling back. Following up here. Yeah. So yeah, fresh and fit demonetized on youtube yeah so um speaking of trash black men pivot where's this going did you hear about uh neil long and Ime Udoka? what'd he do now tmz is reporting that she wants uh she, primary she custody of their son because he is currently not supporting their child And TMZ reported it, so you know it's true. No, because didn't they report some like influencer pop star was dead? And Everybody she did. Was not dead. Everybody did. That's 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 an outlier. So now it's uh, what do they call it? Um, aberration is that the word? Maybe I think. Um, yeah. So Long made the allegation in a court filing in Los Angeles last week while requesting a judge give her primary legal custody of their 11-year-old son. According to the doc, she did ask the judge to allow Doka a reasonable opportunity to visit their kid to the extent consistent with the child's best interests. Uh, ruling the petition has not yet been handed down. Doka has yet to respond. So they broke up late last year after 13 years together following, you know, the everything that went down. The Book of Mormon? With the... Uh, with the Boston, Boston Celtics, while he was while he was the coach there, uh, recently was hired by, by the Houston York. by the Houston Rockets. Oh, I thought he was going to New York. Houston Rockets head coach. Why did I think he was going to New York? Don't know. I feel like New York wanted him. I think he met the Nets. Aren't they in New York? Uh, yeah, but they're not referred to as the New York Nets. They're the Brooklyn Nets. But they're in New Jersey. No, they used to be. No, they're in Brooklyn. I don't really reference Jersey. You wouldn't need to because they're in Brooklyn. But they were in Jersey at one point. Used to be, yeah. How long ago? But not anymore, like, I don't know, eight years ago? So were the New Jersey Nets? They were the New Jersey Nets, yeah. I don't know that this was accurate history. Um, But I'm pretty sure there was, like, a New York team that wanted him. Just the Brooklyn Nets. So then why, when I initially said it, you made it seem like You said New York. Is Brooklyn when people not in New when York? people speak of an NBA franchise and they say New York, they mean the Knicks. Everybody, this is universally understood for people who talk about the NBA. So trust me on this one. So that's why I thought you meant the Knicks, and I was like, no. But then I remember that. Oh yeah, Brooklyn did want him. But while Brooklyn is in New York, Brooklyn is not referred to as New York Nets, the Brooklyn Nets. Whatever. I'm just saying, if you go talk to any NBA person or fan and say, oh, does this person play, name a Nets player and be like, does this person play for New York? They'll be like, no, they play for Brooklyn. Okay. I'm just telling you. Okay. But I just recognize that a New York team wanted it. That's not what you said, though. You said New York. Yeah, New York. (laughs) I'm just okay. Pick the New York team. I didn't know which New York team. I you just didn't said say New a New York team. You I said, said New, New York. York. You said New York. There's two teams in New York, but only one is referred to as New York, and that's the next. Everybody else, by me, New York. There are two NBA teams. You're so wrong. I'm not. You're so wrong on this. You are. I'm not. And it's okay for you to be wrong. I'm not. Especially on on NBA stuff like you like. I don't come talk to you about spirits industry and liquor. 
because you don't know nothing. Exactly. And you don't know nothing about the NBA. I know enough about New York to say <laughs> that don't a know, New York team wanted him. You don't him. know enough to, to know that when you say New York, 11, know, 11 out of 10 people are going to think that you meant is, I the said Knicks. New York. Or whatever. Because they you just don't want to admit you wrong. You just don't want to admit you wrong. I'm not wrong. Yes, you this are. This isn't like a wrong or right yes, thing. Yes, it, it absolutely is. I said New is. York wanted him. It absolutely because is. Because the team no. that wanted him is based in New York. No, you're wrong. Because they're the I'm Brooklyn, the Brooklyn back, Nets, not the New back. York Knicks. He's, so he's trash. He's not paying child support or taking care of his kid, which I just don't understand. This is probably a topic for another day. I just don't understand people who will procreate and how do you live your life every day god gives you breath and you wake up and get out of bed and you know you have an offspring out there and you can live with yourself knowing that you are not contributing to their life as it stands i don't understand how anyone can do that I'm not just I, leaving that to men because there are women who are who can be like that too, yeah. but it's a majority men. It's usually that's awfully, that's awfully inclusive of you. Yeah, I mean I'm canceling it. It's <laughs> out of like a hundred percent. I'm giving like <laughs> six point two. Um, um, can I say something controversial? I don't think it's that difficult. <laughs> Clearly, it's not because I mean it's not surprising. I mean we know several people like just in our circle mm. um who have uh baby He's, daddies or or fathers of their kids who you know are really up to snuff i don't think it's art personally i don't think it's that difficult clearly it can be because <laughs> people get up in the morning and you know, you say, how can you wake up in the morning? People just roll over and stand up. No, <laughs> people are heartless. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to, I'm not obviously advocating <laughs> for men not to be involved in their kid's life. I think you know how strongly I feel about this. But, I mean, it's not hard for a person to be selfish. Like, you don't even have to break it down to just men. It's not hard for a person to be. We're selfish in nature. That's who we are like when we're babies we cry we don't if we're if we're inconvenienced by the slightest thing a baby will cry their ass off mm -hmm. want a bottle cry poopy diaper cry wet diaper i mean that's the only way they can communicate they don't have cry. words want that toy over there that i can't reach cry don't want the food you put in front of me that you slaved over that's literally how they cry. communicate they have no words. But I'm just saying, like, we're inherently self we're inherently selfish people. That's just who we are. So if you don't if you've you know, not been taught responsibility, um, or you don't understand the gravity of being involved in your involvement as a father or a parent in a kid's life. It's clearly not that difficult for people to just, you know, do what they do. If they feel like being involved, they'll be involved. If not, you know, it's whatever. Um, it's unfortunate, but. But how are you not gonna be involved and have money? I feel like if you're, I feel like I can excuse. No, I mean it's not an excuse because I mean if you don't have money, at least be present. Um, but. Nia Long's just been done so dirty. Like, how are you going to embarrass this woman on a national platform, national stage, in front of the world, and then not take care of your kid, too? You know, speaking of child support, did you hear about Halle Berry? Yes. Yeah. They got her. She now has to pay child support to two ex-husbands, right? Yeah, she's mm -hmm. not had great fortune there. She'll be all right. She's Halle Berry. We'll look, you know. I haven't seen her in anything in a while. Doesn't matter. It's Halle Berry. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying, like, she, she got to be in anything. It's, she did it's like Halle those Berry. two movies where everyone clowned her for like getting beat up. 
like going out of her way to do movies where she would get beat up. Don't matter. I should probably go watch one or two of those. It's Halle Berry. Do we still have Netflix? I do. <laughs> Y'all don't. I don't I have, know. I don't know what it is. It works on my iPad, but it doesn't work. I think work. I have it on my phone because they send the me TV. notifications like, "Watch this new show." Yeah. So we borrow, we bum our Netflix for the uh, who haven't figured it out, but it won't work on the main T course, the freaking big screen the TV. It won't works. work on the kid. The kids' the profile works, but the adult one doesn't work. So if we just want to watch PG, but stuff. I turned on my iPad and it, it logged in just fine. I think it'll take a mobile device because it'll recognize that you could be traveling and using mm-hmm. that mobile device, whereas mm-hmm. a TV is stationary. So grimy. They really are petty. So grimy. Um, that's a shame. So, but I their mean, reven- their revenue went up, so that's that's all that matters. So, but we could just play it on our phone and then airplay it to a TV. Could do that. Yeah, that might be the move. Um, I just. That might be a bit much. We're a small enough podcast that no one from Netflix is watching. To we, just pay, we just pay for it. It's twenty dollars. So no, because <clears> at <throat> this point we just need someone to put all of the streaming services together at one flat rate, which then just turns into cable. I mean, we're already kind of there. It's cable all over. Cable two point oh. We should. We <clears> knew this <throat> was coming. We knew this was coming. Like society knew this was coming. There were going to be so many streaming platforms. That we would be paying four ninety nine, eight ninety nine, twelve ninety nine. That it's just going to end up being eighty bucks plus your internet, plus you know if you're whatever other streaming things you've got. It was a good run. It was for like I think the beginning four to six years was good. It was a good run. We were there. Mm-hmm. We were on. We were there on the forefront. I'll never forget they we actually turned in our direct TV boxes. Oh sling TV was we still sling first, right? And then PlayStation sling. View. And then AT and T. And then uh what do we do? AT and T for a little bit. Then we didn't just didn't have anything. We didn't we have went back to like direct TV. Nah, we no. No, direct TV had like a mobile one. Oh they yeah. They had an app. Like direct TV yeah. now, or but then, something. but there was we did do direct TV now. But then there was a while where we just didn't have anything. Yeah, we used we the just, antenna, yeah, and, and then, then Hulu. and then we did um, YouTube TV, which we we currently have. But they got one more. They got one more price hike. Yeah, so calling it. I mean, because all we watch is Bluey. <clears throat> it's a wrap. All we watch is Bluey. Put that throw that antenna back on the joint. Get the get the local stations. Look, ABC is all I need. Yeah, they got one more. Um, what's the next topic? The debate. No, it's not. What's the next topic, David? We are living in history. Because tonight, your boy was booked and photographed. I need to look the mug. Have you seen the mug shot? Have you seen the, yeah. I gotta go I've find seen it. it. So, Stop uh, calling him my boy. Booked like, don't, in, booked, don't connect him to booked me. Booked in Fulton County. Donald J. Trump, <laughs> the 45th president of the United States, this has a mugshot. A, he's mad. Has a mugshot. Also listed that he was 6'3", 215 pounds. Now, look, I've been skinny all my life. I know what it's like to be body shamed and be picked on because of your frame. Did he get mad about having a triple Ain't chin? no... Look... <laughs> Trump ain't too two fifteen is very being very modest. Um ain't no way this man is two fifteen. But anyways. Uh yeah, had his mugshot was booked. Giuliani was yesterday. Uh Mark Meadows was um, he surrendered earlier today. Now did they Trump. go to jail or they paid they bailed they bailed out. They bailed out. Oh, okay. Out. Except for the, you know, the poor people, the smaller people who were part of this who don't really have that kind of money. So Rudy Giuliani, I think Rudy, I think Rudy posted. I think he got a, um, the the blacks for Trump or whatever leader or person or whatever. He's still, he's still in there. The two. Well, the 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 
guy. The guy. Guy is he's still in there. No comment. I think one of your kids is up. Um So yeah. Living in history. No, they're not. Nobody's awake? Mm mm. Doors mm-hmm. closed. Cool. Um so a big big week for for Trump, right? Uh was uh, surrendered today mm-hmm. at the mugshot. Yesterday, during the Republican debate, he actually dropped a interview with Tucker Carlson. So, a lot of people were wondering if Trump was going to be at the debate. And then, about a week week before, it was the rumors had floated that he wasn't going to be there. You know, he's got like a forty to fifty point lead over the next closest person. Um, instead, he was going to you know, do this interview with Tucker Carlson, who now is on X or Twitter, formerly known as Twitter. He's done like 19 or some episodes. This is just rename it the app formerly known as Twitter. Sure. Pull a print. Um, so probably one of the more softball type interviews uh, Trump's ever done, obviously. Right. Like at this point, he can choose who he sits down with. Mm hmm. Um, I got about it's a 46 minute interview I got about 35 minutes through it better than me no questions about the indictments Um, so I'm going to assume there weren't any if I'm wrong somebody can let me know Uh, but I don't know how you talk how you sit down with someone who's running for president and has been indicted four times four and not ask them about any of the indictments indictment so he even actually posited that he being Tucker Carlson, the lefties, the liberals, lunatics, um, have tried all of these different mechanisms to get Trump away, put him away, keep him from running. That they may even try to kill him next. This was actual actual question that was floated. <laughs> Who tried to take out the governor of Michigan? Um, and asked him twice that I could count. It's like, are you worried that they may try to like kill you? I'm like, we're not that desperate, bro. Ain't no, like, no one's trying to kill Trump. I mean, I'm sure some people would, <laughs> if they had a chance, they, you know, put some rice in on his on his Liberals Big Mac. Are not that desperate, but um, though. yeah, I'm like, like only only one side just literally stormed the Capitol looking for Pence and pooping in the trying halls. to put a trying to put a noose around his neck, so. That's just wow. It was it was it was a very it was a very interesting interview for me because I've never actually watched Tucker. I know obviously know who Tucker Carlson is, yeah, but I've never clips. I've never actually sat down and watched him interview. Um, I don't think I like him, or I'm not fond um, of him. But I haven't engaged with him enough to know. I've only ever seen like controversial clips, and yeah. he's just too much. Um. So yeah, that dropped. I'm not sure how what kind of numbers it did. I think when I saw early this afternoon, like 166 million view people have viewed the video, but a view could be, you know, I'm scrolling, I see it on my screen for a couple of seconds, and I keep scrolling. A view could be somebody watched for five minutes. I I doubt very much that if somebody watched a view means you watch the entire 46 minute clip because I know there's no way 166 million people did that. Mm-hmm. But you know. He um yeah he had his had his interview during the debate which was in Milwaukee. His interview was also in Milwaukee. No, the debate was in Milwaukee. Trump uh, was wherever he was. I don't know where that. I don't. I don't know. I don't think the interview took place the same day. I think that's just they when they just dropped it. Yeah, that's just when they dropped it. Yeah, um, apparently Milwaukee is like serious territory for politics. They said Biden's been doing a lot of advertisement up there and i think he uh, visited recently and now they've got the i think the republican national convention is actually going to be in milwaukee so wisconsin mm. is clearly an important oh, it's, a swing, um, it's a swing state is it yeah milwaukee is also pretty racist <laughs> is it as a city i mean there are there are parts you know it's funny everyone i know mm. from milwaukee is black 
You know, Jasmine's from. Well, you have black, you have black people there, but that doesn't mean. Um, Beth, uh, our friend, our friend Beth, has even said that you know. Is she from Milwaukee? Yeah. From she live out there? What do you mean from? I think I I always mix up Milwaukee and Minneapolis. Yeah, Jarrell's from Minneapolis. That's what it is. I was like, I know someone's from shout Minneapolis. Shout out to the shout out to the circle. Hey, people. Um. But yeah, Wisconsin swing state. So yeah, I've been to Milwaukee, and I was I stayed in New Berlin, but we popped over to Milwaukee. I could do I could do without it's cold snows like it's not. I mean, I was there in the summer, so it wasn't that bad. Um, but yeah, the debate. I you would ask me real quick, um, because Trump wasn't there. No. Right. So there were like seven other people. Mm-hmm. Who were. Ron DeSanctimonious. <laughs> Sorry, Ron DeSant- DeSanctimonious is what Trump calls Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. I thought that was his boy. Vivek Ramaswamy. Yo, I don't know where he came Stop. From. Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Chris Christie, uh, Doug Burgum, and Asa Hutchison, former uh, governor of Arkansas. There are several other candidates who are in the race who did not make it. Most notably, Larry Elder. Who? <laughs> it's funny. I said most notably, and then you're like, who? Um, <laughs> uh, Larry Elder is probably the most notable name on the list. There's Will Hurd, who? Perry Johnson, Francis Suarez, and um, that's it, according to CNN. So you have to you either. I can't remember what the threshold is. You have to have a certain number of donations or be polling at a certain number um, to make the debate. Larry Elder, who was on The Breakfast Club last week, uh, was close, hadn't hadn't yet quite clinched, thought there might be a chance, but now he's suing the, the RNC because he feels like they're the criteria for making the debate is, is unfair. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Um, sorry to this man. Because you don't um, really, really be in politics like that. No, because... Or, radi- or radio. The little part of the debate that I did force myself to watch um I was like who are these people even DeSantis it took a hot minute for me to be like why does that guy look familiar and then I was like oh it's you you around the sanctimonious and then um little I was gonna say slumdog millionaire um, he came on the screen. Yeah, he's, a, yeah, he's like a, he's a legit billionaire. He came on the screen. And I was like, who who are you? When did you get added to this? Only reason why I know Nikki Haley is because she's from South Carolina. Um, so then those two were going at, it and I was like, oh, it's like the Battle of the Indians. Um, and then I had half a thought that the first female president, we can't afford for her to be a right wing. So it won't one. It won't be Nikki Haley. I think she's not going to win. It won't be. Yeah. Um, I re- and it, it's it's tough because it's like I have respect for her accomplishments because you know immigrant child um, or child of immigrants. You know she's real. I mean, she, what was she ambassador or UN? She some UN secretary something like that. Um, Ghana also had a UN secretary, Kofi Annan. I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, we were all very proud of him. But um, so I appreciate her, but. I was just like, who are all these people? And what are they arguing about? What are they... How to, how to run the country. But they don't know. They well, can't. A couple, a couple of them knew. Well, they, I mean, so Nikki Haley was a governor, right? Um, Asa Hutchinson was a governor. Uh, Mike Pence um, and was vice president. Chris Christie was a governor, right? Um, so there are people who know how to lead uh, large populations uh, not as large as the country obviously mike pence was you know right there in the side he was the right hand man uh in the, he knows what it's like to be in the throes of a presidency he's not gonna win no he's not um you know uh i laugh every time i see mike pence because you know he's so super conservative super christian um but just like real stiff like he just seems like he has zero personality like I feel like he'd be the same, sober or drunk. He's just he's just be mm-hmm. the same dude. So you remember drunk. you remember years ago, um, 
the meme that went popular, this guy was like sitting at this table, like on a campus or something, makes a statement and you see it's written like change my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so somebody had a Photoshop Mike Pence's face on dude's head on dude's body and was like, white rice is spicy. <laughs> change my mind. He does look like someone who would say that. It is just I always I always think of that meme whenever I see Mike Pence and I can't help but laugh because it just it just fits. <laughs> like, very, I feel like he, he's very flat. He would look like he was somebody who would say I white rice like is spicy. I can talk to just about anyone. I think Mike Pence would probably be a very difficult person for me to have a um, conversation with. So yes, uh, the debate was I, I had it on. Um, I, I started watching it in the girl's bedroom because I was trying to put them to sleep so I had the captions on but you know you can't really mm -hmm. uh, get, a, get a feel for what, how the audience is receiving people so once the girls went to sleep it was about 10 10 30 I came out here and put it on but I was busy trying to set up for the pod because I thought we were going to record uh, so I was like you know what Correction, we recorded I thought we were going to finish the recording and um but I was like you know what I'll just check it out tomorrow so um I tried to watch the whole thing didn't really work so I caught uh some of the highlights but um, basically Vivek who's sort of like the outsider he reminds me of the right wing uh, what's his name Martin Yang, Stephen Yang Tony Yang Yang yeah, Yang Andrew Yang Yang, Yang. Yeah. and there's some similarities both very rich uh, both entrepreneurs um, I'm not sure if Yang's parents were immigrants or not and I know Vivek's um, are, were. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, outsiders who came in, um, minorities, uh, trying to uh, trying to run for the president's presidency from a, a business entrepreneurial uh, mindset, challenging the old, you know, Washington mentality. And uh, a lot of, and Pence went after him pretty early, called him a rookie, saying, yo, I've been, in the saying scale. I've been in the heat of heat of the moment, you know what I'm saying? You you a rookie. We this ain't the time for on the job training. Just what pen verbatim. On the job training, got time for it. Uh Nikki Haley challenged him on foreign policy, foreign policy ideas. That's when it went like um it was like New Delhi crowd, versus crowd. Bangladesh. <laughs> crowd was very animated toward that. Um So yeah, I mean, Asa Hutchinson, you know, kind of wasn't there. Like, nobody was really there. Like, there are times where I, like, they asked Tim Scott a question. I was like, oh, yeah, Tim Scott's here. <laughs> Yo, he was just decoration. He was like, you know, when you're, when you put, like, a cheap party together, like, you go to the dollar store and you get stuff, mm -hmm. and then you realize, like, oh, the gray bag, like, let me, like, put all the bags in a bag. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, the, like, party sprinkles, that's who he was because no mm. one remembered him. And every time he spoke, it was like... A salute to someone. Yeah. Um, I just don't know what he's what he's given. So, you know, I gotta say, they had DeSantis and Vivek one and two, right? Like dead center of the stage, because I, I think DeSantis is two and Vivek is three, like in the polling, most really? national polling. I didn't know this guy until yesterday. So, I don't even know. I don't think I knew all these people. Were I gotta running. tell you, DeSantis does not impress me. Like it, it, it's like going from um, college, like basketball players, like college, like you can have, you can be like an all American and then you go to the league, the NBA and you're you like, suck. you don't suck, but you, you're not great. You're not, you're not Kobe. Rest in peace. God bless it. That happy birthday belated miss you. Um, but you can be like He's really mediocre. great. you can be like really great, but then you go to another stage and you're like, eh. You know, he he's he's a man down there in Florida, mm -hmm. but on the national stage and you can tell he doesn't really want to upset like the Trump base because they're even if he doesn't get the he needs them, even if he doesn't get like the nod, maybe he can be a VP. So um, but he just came off like real not ready, like just not this like the moment was kind of big for him because he doesn't have anything. Um, like the that whole like woke fear mongering, I feel like that's. It works in Florida. Yeah, the rest of the country is not Florida. Yeah, 
but this is here's the big leagues. Yeah. So it only goes but so far. <laughs> there's this clip where um where instead of like attacking people, right? He he tried this thing where he would speak directly to the camera like he was talking to the American people. Um I can't remember what the question was, but he basically ended it with like, and I promise I will not let you down and he like did this like weird smile thing where it wasn't quite a smile, like almost the like purge. he was trying to force purge. People say he he's got like the little home Homelander thing from the boys. You remember Homelander? It's been a while since you watched the boys. I but watched um, like one episode. Yeah, so it's been a while. And um yeah, he's just he's just weird. He is very he's uncomfortable. awkward. Like I you know I mean Trump's weird but <laughs> But you know he's weird. But like you the, know like, you know his weird. But Trump has authority, right? Like you can He's I, confident in his weirdness. He's a leader unfortunately like i can tell that he's been he's someone who can walk into a room command it mm-hmm. and expect like a certain level of respect and command it desantis i don't really get that like it's you're just like, oh, i'm here i'm you know, yeah. mr mr governor mr president mr woke, 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 woke boogeyman i i took two things away from the debate if i had to pick a republican candidate to vote for you know i'm going with sid hartha i just feel like his name is vivek number one don't be disrespectful. Vivek. I'll vote for Vivek. Um, just because he was he's the outlier. He's different. Um, so he um, actually has some ideas that on the surface feel extremely radical. And you're like, bro, what are you talking about? But. But when he explains them, you're like, okay. Mm-hmm. So like he was like, we should um, get rid of the FBI. So when you just hear get rid of the FBI, it's like, bro, that's like. Defund the police. It, that's what it sounds like and it's like this is a long-standing institution you know blah 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 blah. but when you re- when he broke it down he's like there's like twenty thousand or some field agents who didn't report. i tell you to go be an fbi agent bang vivek's putting you out of work he said there's like twenty thousand agents who report to the the hoover building like like twenty thousand yo and hoover was a and, questionable man and not all of them are like specialized like so a lot of them are just desk agents he was like why don't you put them in other agencies so that they can become specialized you've got homeland security you've got like u.s marshals you've got like all these other different agencies where you can put some of these twenty thousand agents and have them be a little bit more more special you got local you've got local pd you've got the fbi have specific investigations that they cover oh yeah but i mean you could you you could reassign those if you defund the fbi who's going to handle those um good did you just designate a different agency so that to handle those re- allocate like what falls under yeah. homeland security now yeah, and whatnot. Secret, you know, like secret service they do some some stuff that doesn't just involve like protecting the president, the president or protecting the president protecting uh so stuff like but then you know he's against affirmative action you know he said uh called like juneteenth like like a fake holiday or something like that um he uh, wants people to have to take before you can vote, once you'd have to be able to pass like a civics test or akin, necessarily against that. akin to what I am. Um, Why? Well, one because it smacks of like poll. Uh, you know the test like black people had they made black people take before they could vote back in the day to try to prohibit them from voting. Um, number one, you talk about civil liberties in this country. Like that's a civil liberty. Like mm-hmm. my right to vote. Me being born here when I'm of a certain age. Like. I have the right to default. vote. You're not going to tell me that I got to pass some tests but that I other people that other people who want to come to this country have to take and pass. But because have you ever seen right. like those like parody videos where they ask it people questions? I it still think he's. I think the point that bo- it boils down to is that we're not educating our people enough to know basic civics. Doesn't matter. Um, so I, I don't necessarily say that, oh, you need to pass an exam, but I do think that the, I think it boils down to the educational system in itself and that we are not educating people in terms of like making sure they're retaining American. So you want to send me to, you want me to be eligible to go enlist in the military at 18, potentially. I didn't say that. No, I'm not you. I'm saying just the, the idea. Right, want me to be able to enlist at eighteen, potentially go fight a war um, that may or may not even involve my country. Right, um, at eighteen, I ain't got to take no test for that. 
Right? I just got to be able bodied. Don't but you have to pass PT? You have to enlist no matter. You have to sign up no matter what. Like when you're 18, you have to sign up. I didn't have to enlist. You ain't a man. <laughs> oh. Um, I, I had to sign up. Oh, you did. Yeah, and if you don't, like they come get you. <laughs> they know where you at. So, um, I didn't realize that was like still a thing. It, I mean, either. Well, I don't know what it is now, but I know when I when I, I was coming up, it was. I imagine it's still the same thing. Um, but I think you age out after you're like 35. So. You had that long. You had to wait that long. Well, so yeah, that's why I've been praying. I'm like, please don't let this. <laughs> please don't let there be another so, war. I'm so glad to be a lady. Um. So yeah, you're not gonna tell me that like you can send kids off to war and die at 18, and they ain't got to take no test for that. They just got to be 18 and have all their limbs or whatever. I mean, you got to take a test to get your driver's license. I don't remember that being in the Constitution. Being able to drive. We didn't I have just, we didn't have vehicles. I just don't. We had vehicles. We had, we had horses. It was a vehicle. Sure it was had, a means. Sure it was a it was it was a vehicle to, to get from horse. one to another. I'm not saying um, that you should. I'm also not done with my point yet. You, know, you so cut me you, off before I said my two points. Okay. So how you constantly disrespect it's me? It's not. I, it's. I don't understand why you're going to make me try to pass the civics test. Like, nah, I bro. I think the American system needs the educational system. And I mean, and this is where Florida will have a problem because you have to touch on other things. But I do think there are a lot of things that uh, people graduate from high school not knowing. And I, th I think that's an issue. So I'm not, I won't say that I'm for it, but I'm, I also, I will say that I stood with, I can't remember who said it, but somewhat, and I've said it on the podcast, that there needs to be some kind of exam for people who are running for political office. It says, but got, this has nothing to do. with every Tom, Dick, and Harry getting up and being like, I'm going to run. And I and think do they should. win? Trump did. Okay. He's literally a Tom, Dick, and a Harry. I think. But that think Trump, you can't, you can't look at Trump and have recency and have some look sort of like revisionist look history. At George Bush. Look at George Bush was a governor. Okay. Was he a good governor? Doesn't matter. He was he was he was a politician. I'm saying everyone should take the aptitude test. You yeah. should take the test before you become a governor. Your your test is whether or not you can appeal to Then you take a popularity test. To fifty one percent of or fifty all I'm point saying, whatever all I'm, percent of the American people. All I'm people. saying is I do think that there should be some kind of like I don't. aptitude test to ensure that this person is able bodied to allegedly mm, make decisions that that's are that's going to benefit. That's infringing me. on my constitutional right. But yeah, I we don't, I we don't want to infringe on the Second Amendment. I don't think we should infringe on my right to vote. Anyway, if I had to pick someone, I would vote for Raj. His name's Vivek. Vivek. Um, who also bit a good, who stole a good bit of his little introductory piece that he did at the, on the debate from, from Obama. Obama. So first, let me just address a question that is on everybody's mind at home tonight. Who the heck is this skinny guy with a funny last name and what the heck is he doing in the middle of this debate stage? I'll tell you, I'm not a politician. Of a mill worker's son who dares to defy the odds. The hope of a skinny kid with a funny name who believes that America has a place for him, too. Of course you do. Which is interesting, right? Isn't it interesting? Like, Republicans and conservatives, they always trash the Obamas, and then they always pull, like, inspiration from them. Like, course. remember when, um, what's Trump's wife's name? Melania. Melania, like, just... It's just like they weren't even weren't even shy, but like weren't even trying to be slick about it. It's plagiarize all of uh, Michelle's speech. We biting Obama now by Obama's speeches. It's just interesting. They hate they hate it. They hate us. They hate us because we ain't they ain't, they ain't us. us. <laughs> they be stealing. They be stealing their stuff, man. Um. So yeah, if Ron Ron DeSantis is. It's weird. Um, Chris Christie was there just so he could trash Trump. <laughs> like, he even, did come even, to Pence's defense. Even Vivek called him out. Yeah, because he, I mean, because he has sense. Like, there was a point where they, they asked everyone on the, because they all have to sign a pledge, right? Republicans mm -hmm. have to take this pledge. Um, even if you don't win, will you still support the nominee? 
right? That's some cult stuff. In order to in order to like be on the debate stage, you have to like you have to agree to that. So, and this is this is like traditional Republicans, right? One thing people always say about Republicans is that they may not oh, necessarily fall they fall in line. That's what they do. Like I remember famously, my English teacher in like tenth or eleventh grade was like, "I'm a Republican who wants to be a Democrat, but I can't be a Democrat because they." they believe in abortion like they think abortion is is a right so she just votes for whatever republic she voted for whatever republican nominee was there um that's just like like i feel like this is majority of republicans i don't know how it got that way but um that's just how it is so they said how many of you on stage would support trump if he was the nominee knowing that there are all these indictments like all of the, everybody raised their hand i think with the exception of like one or two Ron DeSantis looked around <laughs> and saw everybody raise their hand. So he was like, yo, Honk. I can't get jiggy with it. Um, can't get jiggy with it. I think it. Trump's going to become the nominee. Because I, no one yeah. else. I mean, he's 50 points. Ahead. I mean, he said in his interview with Tucker Carlson, you know, I'm at 50 points. You know, sometimes at one point I was 70 points ahead of people. Um, he said there are people who don't who shouldn't even be on the stage i just don't um, know if i want if i what another four years of trump would be like survivable I don't know. it's you know, survivable you know, I mean, but who knows but uh yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens but i think honestly i think vivek is gonna he's gonna be around um he said he wouldn't consider being anybody's VP. I don't think he'd get the nominee. And uh, if Trump gets put in jail. Um, so honestly, people should strive. That's, that's, it'll be interesting to see what happens if he gets put in jail, who they would, who I, everyone would turn to. But he wouldn't go to jail until after the election, right? So mm-hmm. what happens? Like, that's what I think they need to start strategizing. Well, he's, because, you, got four, you got four different trials. Yeah. <laughs> One could hit. But, the elections november of 2024 Mm -hmm. he could theoretically win the election and then you've got that gap period between the election win and inauguration in january Mm -hmm. what happens if and i don't even think all four cases can go to trial in that window of time because someone's trying shooting for march 4th so from march to november is only 10 months if i'm not mistaken i don't think that's enough time to imprison someone like who has four other you know cases against them so i'm curious if say he won in november but doesn't get inaugurated but maybe all the cases are closed by the end of november and like december he gets guilty and a sentence does the person who was his vice presidential nominee default like what happens if that person if the president isn't inaugurated and something keeps president him, elect. the president elect isn't inaugurated and something prevents him from becoming president i don't know and i don't think anyone who wrote how things are supposed to ha- happen could have ever thought that this would be the case y'all need like, to start I, conjuring up the forefathers like we like i said we're living in history right like we like it's been common for so long that trump's an accused criminal mm-hmm. and now it's actually close to being like legit confirmed yeah i just how wild this is and he's running for president and people are like throwing their support behind him Mm -hmm. and his and seven people like six five six people on stage last night said they would still support him if he got the nominee which from the party that's supposed to be like morals and christian values and stuff like you know not to say that democrats are you know squeaky clean either but i'm just like yo i had to sit back and think every once in a while like <laughs> what is wild what is happening like i just you walk around like you see trump flags and you still see the the bumper stickers and the mm-hmm. merch and it's like dude's been indicted four times he's averaging in, in one indictment a month mm-hmm. um I I, wow. I I don't I mean I don't I don't I don't knock anybody who who I I may know personally who who rocks with them, 
Um, I think he's great content. Mm-hmm. Great inter- entertainment. You know but, you're going to get something. Uh, as as saying, I would vote for this person. I don't know. Far be it from me. You'd have to cut me a check to vote for Trump, and I'd need half the check cashed ahead of time. Yeah. It would have to be a big check. I'm not taking like little pennies. Like I need <sighs> millions of dollars, and then I need half of it up front. It's crazy untaxed it's wild um but yeah so I can't say I wouldn't vote for him there but it would be like it would take a lot yeah it would uh, someone came to you and was like I will give you two million dollars to vote for Donald J. Trump you have children <laughs> they live well too they would live be- weller if you voted weller. for him and got that two million no I'm good Look, y'all, y'all can have my vote. I will, I will. Oh, I, I can't, my, my, my vote can't be bought. Oh, I'll sell my vote. Remember, I, according to Trump, I'm not really even an American, so I, I come from a shithole country. I can't be bought. No, you come from the Bronx. But according to him, I'm not an American because my parents are naturalized. Yeah, nothing to do with you got birthright. He said, I come from a shithole country. Your parents come from a shithole country is what he said. Which I come from too. No, nah, you come from well. It depends upon how you feel about the Bronx. <laughs> but, um, oh, nah, you from your you from, people gonna get you. Your own people are gonna get you. No, I just, I just, I said it feels how it depends on how you feel about the Bronx. I didn't say how I feel about the Bronx. I've been in the Bronx a couple of times. I love the Bronx. <laughs> They're great people. They love me there. They love me in, in in New York. They love me in the borough. I got nothing but love for New York. No, he can't win because then I gotta hear your impersonations of him every week, and I'm not doing that another season. I got I don't. I don't get the sniffles down. You know when he how he sniffles in between like his statement. You know, people take like a breath. <laughs> he sniffles in between his um, his sentences. But yeah, man. Next debate is the 27th. Of is September, another of, debate? You think they just do one debate and then they go out and tired. Already the twenty seventh, yeah. Republicans. Mm-hmm. What new thing? The are Ronald they Reagan, say? the Ronald Reagan Library. Mm. Yeah. I feel like there's going to be like a dare ad in front of it. Because you know Nancy was big about drug, not doing drugs. Nancy was big about a lot of things. <laughs> what the streets are saying. Nancy, Nancy got down with the get down. Yeah, she definitely got down for sure. David. What? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, streets. The streets are saying. On that note. Hour and 40 minutes. I think it's a wrap. So we'll, uh, we'll be back next week. Before Jessica. We'll record before Jessica takes her trip out of the country. First stamp of the year, baby. Leaves her, uh, she leaves her young family behind, so she can go gall- come. So she can go gallivant with uh, the two lit crew. Her and her uh, and Georgia, her friends and her cousin, her baby cousin, who we all love. And I'll be here holding it down with my three three princesses, and uh, we'll be waiting for you when you get back. Although I think um, this is a very good trip, very good timing for your trip. I think it's good for you to get away. You've had a lot going on, you know, Mm -hmm. and days are long and monotonous. So I think it's good for you to be able to just go and unwind away. (laughs) It's good for you to just just go what are you scheming i'm just saying it's, it's it's sometimes it's good to not only not be busy but to not be busy away i think that's what you need mm. okay. so uh we look forward to that and safe travels and enjoy his time and then safe return so, but we won't miss a beat here mm-hmm. because you're just going for the weekend so 
we'll be back after the Labor Day holiday after our episode drops next week. Appreciate everybody who's watching every single Rush Vibes episode this season. Your finger out of my frame. Oh yeah, that's in your frame, isn't it? Every single Rush Vibes episode this season has seen at least seventy views. Really? Every single one. Nice. About to every single. Now I got a little nervous. Yeah, I don't know if it was. Week? I don't know if it was last week or the one before last week. Was sitting at like seventeen for a couple of days, and then it just you know made its made its way. Look, they demonetize what frozen and fresh and flipping um, flipping flop. So you know. They got room A. They got room to monetize. I think here. I think we <laughs> we're so far. We gotta get like a thousand see like a thousand or ten thousand subscribers and like I think it's ten thousand subscribers and then uh a thousand hours watched. Okay. Or something like that. Um uh, we're So it's possible. Oh so it's absolutely possible. And you know honestly we put out one one episode a week, one social media post a week. It's really it. Mm-hmm. Um, in this day and age, you got to be active. You got to be in the algorithm. You do. It um, needs to be someone's full time job. It does. And you know, here in a few weeks, <laughs> it, it <laughs> might be. a decision might <laughs> might be made for us. So um, maybe I could I could do that. But um, I, you know, we've made some some recent investments, uh, upgrading some of our, our gear here at Rush Vibes, so we that did. we can we can crank out more content quicker transfer content we uh we upgraded our uh, our computer here at rush vibes we did we did when did we upgrade our computer upgrade our, huh? did so, you get um, a new computer and not tell me no i would never do something like that you're a liar <laughs> i haven't told you yet but you got a new computer it's in the cart you better add my ipad to the cart Absolutely. i'm trading in the other one um, You're trading it in for you. No, I'm trading it in for the pot. I'm literally getting it because the iPad. Oh, man, no, I'm not talking about iPad. I'm talking about the computer. Because we need more. I need to be able to, to export quicker and render quicker. It's not be taking too long. Be falling asleep waiting for stuff to transfer in and push out. So, um, with more speed, you know opens up the opportunity for me to do a little bit more in terms of the content side, you know. But nonetheless, every single episode has seen at least 70, 75 views, I think. So we appreciate everybody, even if it's people watching it, you know, multiple times to get through these hour plus long episodes. Um, but if it's new people who stumble upon us, you know, we appreciate you watching, even if it's just for a little bit. Hopefully you hit the subscribe button, like button, because that helps to show up, helps build the following. Uh, right about 120, 122 subscribers on youtube so we appreciate all y'all and uh over 100 on facebook and, and instagram apple spotify google tune in it's four uh fridays on youtube that's all i got what you got nothing nothing this is it i guess i'll go edit this so it can be out tomorrow and we'll see y'all next week peace do 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 Yeah None but some grow pains Yeah Hey Hey I done came way too far can stop me now I done came way too far can stop me now Yeah going to some grow pains Yeah None but some grow pains Yeah Hey Hey I done came way too far can stop me now I done came way too far, can stop me now I done came way too far, can stop me now I done came way too far, can stop me now Stop me now